I'm going to exit out of Facebook completely and just stay on Zoom. Okay. Does that sound good? Yep. And it, you can see on right here, it says live on Facebook. So I think we should be good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We're live on Facebook. Okay. Awesome. So hopefully everybody can see this and hear this. Uh, either way, it's going to be recorded so we can post it later. So, hey, everybody, uh, we're, I'm here with uh, Jason Hamilton. And Jason is the founder of Keep It Simple Financial Planning. And what he is, is he is a financial planner. And his company is a fee-only fiduciary retirement planning and investment management firm. And he lives down in beautiful Southern California in Orange County. And he serves clients virtually nationwide with their, all of their wealth needs. And he's also a published author. He's a professional speaker and uh, he loves dogs just like me. So that's probably why we get along so well. Uh, that's the most so, important part right there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you love dogs, done, we're done. Um, yeah. So what we're going to talk about today is, as the, the title shows, is health and wealth. And what can you do to protect your health and your wealth? And, uh, you know, what are some of the pitfalls and how to avoid them? Uh, because especially as we age, you know, Jason specializes in retirement and a lot of the people that I work with are either retired or getting close to retirement. And so a lot of, you know, financial questions start to come up, especially as it relates to as we age and our health changing and different kinds of things. So, so we're going to dive into that and talk about what you can do to avoid the, the financial pitfalls when it comes to taking care of yourself and your family. Uh, so let's, let's, dive in and and Jason so I'd like to start by just kind of you know talking with you and asking you a little bit about what are the major problems or pitfalls that you see with people when it comes to their finances and and health related issues yeah um, absolutely first of all thank you for for having me on hopefully your audience um, gets a lot of value out of this today the probably the biggest unpredictable cost in retirement is health care um, there's so much up in the air right now, especially with, you know, the Affordable Care Act and, and if it may stay or it may leave. Um, and in between when people retire sometimes and when they can get Medicare, there's a gap. And so there's could be a lot of expenses in there that are unpredictable for people if they do retire before they're on Medicare. Um, even on Medicare, there, you know, there's so many different plans and there's a lot of mistakes people are making with their Medicare choices, which can cost them thousands of dollars per year. And so wow. there can be a lot of unpredictable things that come up when it, when it comes to planning for that. And so we really have to make sure there's a backup plan for the backup plan with that, you know? So I think right. uh, too many people I see go into retirement and just, and don't really get any assistance or help. They just sort of go to the social security website and either sign up for Medicare or they'll buy something like Cobra in between when they do retire, if it's before 65 and hope they get the right coverage and they just don't really understand all the different aspects of it. So I think it's, um, you know, the unpredictability is probably the biggest thing and maybe not setting in aside enough money for that. And then later the long-term care, which we could talk about as well. So that's a little bit later on um, down the road that people don't plan for as well. Okay, great. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit and get some clarity on that. Let's talk actual numbers. So what, you know, what does the average person uh, incur in terms of medical expenses, say, you know, over the course of their, their time in retirement or, or annually, or, you know, what are some of the bigger, the bigger uh, costs associated with health conditions as we get older? I know um, bankruptcy is the number one cause, uh, or medic medical expenses is the number one cause of bankruptcy in this country. And that's a huge, huge problem. And even with the Affordable Care Act, it still is the number one cause of bankruptcy. Um, you know, in, with, with deductibles and out-of-pocket, the average out-of-pocket $7,000 a year. So what are some of those numbers that, so that people can kind of wrap their head around, like, what could this really cost you in real dollars if you don't have a plan and you, and you, you don't have your, your health? Yeah. So, you know, things like having chronic conditions can lead to a lot more expenses, right? Because you need more treatment. You need to see the doctor more often. So you're going to have more deductibles. You may have higher drug costs, you know, which means you have to purchase an additional Medicare um, plan like Medicare Advantage or some sort of supplemental, you know, like Medicare D. So, you know, ha having those extra expenses that are consistent 
really can impact the ability to retire. You know, some people have to keep working because their monthly expenses, for example, like, so what, what we look for first, let me just walk you through like typical retirement planning process and, and like what we want to do before I can say, yes, you can retire, right? So the first thing is we want to get your wage replacement ratio, okay? So what that means is when you're going from your working income to then living off of your fixed income sources, including social security, maybe you have a pension, or maybe it's your assets that we are going to be drawing on or trying to take a percentage of each month to, to live on, um, we have to match what about what they're currently living because in general, you know, if you're 60, 65, probably you're pr probably pretty set in your ways, right? So what you spend on food is going to be pretty consistent, what you spend on, you know, uh, cars or, you know, maintenance on your house, hopefully your mortgage is paid off, but maybe it's not, maybe you still have to cover a mortgage expense. But those things are pretty consistent. So, so we, can, we can plan for those, right? But if we have things like chronic conditions when it comes to health, you know, maybe like um, diabetes or maybe you've had a cancer scare in the, in the past, there's so many things that could be affected by, you know, your health that can really impact the monthly expenses. So we look at that and then, then we add on top of that is the social security timing is so important. Okay, so let me just talk about that for a second. The earliest you could take Social Security is at 62, right? The latest you can take it is at, the latest you want to take it is at 70 because you don't get any um, benefit to take it beyond that. But in between 62 and 70, it could be a 30 to 45% difference um, in how much you're going to get a payout per month for life. So that mm -hmm. could be, I've seen two, three or $400,000 if somebody were to live to say 95, you know, 100 years old, which is very common these days. That's happening more and more. So, if you have a chronic condition, it makes it more likely you're going to take Social Security early, which means your guaranteed, you know, bottom line income is going to be lower, right? Which means you have to have either more assets saved or potentially, you know, you may be relying on other people, right, to cover some of your expenses if you if you haven't saved and invested enough. So there's so many important points that I think you said most of your group is in their 50s and 60s, right? So we still have a little bit of time to you know, to change some things. If, if, if that's the case, if we're going to be thinking about 10 or 15 years from now on planning for this, but you know, when you get to that, like think about your, if your social security goes from instead of 2,500 a month, it's 1700 a month, that's $800 a month forever. And then that's inflated as well that you're going to miss out on because maybe you have to take uh, social security early because you have some sort of chronic condition. There's a, and then, then you're going to have to draw down on your retirement assets faster, which puts more risk on the back end, where if you had, you know, some sickness or some long-term care needs on the back end, that you could potentially run out of money, you know, uh, too early, essentially, and then be in a really bad place. So you want to talk about real numbers, right? That, that was your question. So yeah, um, yeah. Medicare, you know, if you qualify, right, you have to have um, 40 quarters of paying into Social Security, which most people do if they've worked their whole life, right? So if you qualify... The A and B is, um, A is included with, you know, that comes for free. B potentially have a cost depending how much you make. And then there's the supplementals, right? If you want to have the advantage or if you need drug coverage, um, if you need eye care coverage, things like that. That generally, you know, could be anywhere from two to $400 a month. Um, that's not huge. But then what you have to look at is the deductibles you have to meet before all of your, um, they call it the catastrophic kicks in, Right. And that could be easily, you know, two to four or $5,000 a year that you have to come out of pocket before everything is covered after that point. So that's could be wow. significant if you're dealing with chronic conditions every year, where every time you visit the doctor, you're paying, you know, paying deductible, and then you have to pay a percentage of the cost of the medical care. So for most people, it'd be 20%. So say, for example, you had to get, you know, a $5,000 procedure, that's a thousand dollars out of your pocket. You know, um, and it could be with the fifty thousand dollars treatment, you're going to hit, you know, your minimum. With fifty thousand these days, going to the hospital is really not a lot. It's pretty easy to hit that. That's like, uh, you know, right. one emergency visit. Um, but then on the back end, the long term care. So this is where it, it could get really, really impactful to not take care of your health. Okay, so if you have, if you get to a place where you are essentially healthy, where you're not going to pass away, but you cannot do things for yourself anymore. You know, you can't dress yourself. You can't feed yourself. You know, there's, there's, you need assistance. So that's when you go to like a long-term care type of facility. And then there's different levels, right? So there's in-home care. And then there's like um, where you would go to a facility and you have, you know, around the clock, hundred percent care. Um, in-home care is generally right now between two to $3,000 a month. 
Um, and I've seen up to eight to $12,000 a month for full-time 24 hour care. Okay. So the average time people stay in a long-term care facility is like two to three years. Okay. So if you're paying $8,000 a month, uh, for, for two years, so 8,000 times 12 is 96,000 times two, that's 200,000. That's today. Okay. But if you inflate that, right. So someone's 50 right now, and we're talking about 70 or 75 or 80 or 85 when they go in, we're talking, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years down the road, the expected costs about 30 years from now are for, for a long-term care stay for someone's, uh, you know, essentially until they pass away, I hate to talk about these things, but it's just, it is what it is, is expected to be about 600 to $700,000, right? I have a close friend who his mother went into, had to go to a care facility because she had Alzheimer's, right? So her body was fine, but her mind wasn't right because of just lack of good diet lack of taking care of herself and honestly she just focused on other people her whole life uh versus herself and so she ended up having you know some mental conditions she was there for seven years before she passed away so think about that if you uh maybe you're on track to have a million dollar you know portfolio um in retirement and you have a five, six, seven a year stay where it's $100,000 per year um, now, and it's gonna be three or $400,000 per year um, in you know, 10, 15, 20 years, you can burn through your nest egg pretty quickly, right? And the other thing that people aren't always aware of right now is, um, there's a lot of things going on with technology that are gonna be in, improving the lifespan of people. So I study a lot of like what's going on in the medical Jason. field. Yeah. Can I interject for a moment? And I think this is a really important thing to talk about. And I wanted to, to, bring, to, to bring this up into the conversation as well, that while technology is improving and extending the lifespans of people, that doesn't necessarily mean it's, extent, it's improving the quality of those years and that time that people are spending. And, and the expense that the technology is going to get it, and people are going to incur just to stay alive for a certain period of time longer, A, is not going to guarantee that that quality of time that they're extending is going to be very high. And B, you can guarantee also that because somebody's got a, the the cost, the burden of the cost of these technologies that are being created is going to go on to the consumer, i.e. the patient. And so, you know, to, to, that while it's, it's, it's great that all of this technology is coming about and we're starting to improve and extend lifespans and these kinds of things, that, that doesn't necessarily equate to a high quality or to it being any cheaper. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, later on, maybe things will get less expensive, but you're right. So right now they're, they're 3d printing organs, right? So they're 3d printing a heart. They're 3d printing a kidney so they can print organs. So where if you had like a failing organ, then, you know, they can replace that. Well, what if you are, you know, maybe stuck in a wheelchair or stuck in a bed and your quality of life is not that great. Well, if they're going to, if they can just replace your, your, your organs just to keep you alive, that's just going to extend some of, you know, the pain and and the suffering in a sense. And I highly doubt we're going to allow legalized uh, euthanasia anytime soon. And so you're not going to be able to just, you know, uh, you know, and your life at, at any time, right? But the cost of these procedures now is pretty expensive, but they probably will go down. But, but the thing with that is, is it means they're going to be available to more people, right? So that means more and more people are going to need to focus on the rest of their health when it comes to, you know, weight, um, their, their mind state, all those type of things that are so important to, to just really take care of as you're getting into your later years. Um, but not only that, it's like, it's so frustrating for people. I deal with some, some older folks that, have had like some mental trauma and things like that. Um, and it's, and it's very frustrating because maybe 10 years ago, they were able to concentrate on things for two, three hours at a time and do a normal job. Right. Well, now maybe after 30 or 45 minutes, their brain just runs out of energy because, you know, they just essentially got to a point where it's, it's, they're losing uh, capacity. Right. That burnout. Yeah. Yeah. And, And it's just very, you know, it's very frustrating for them. And it's sad for me, but I have a huge passion to help, you know, folks in, in those places um, that are getting a little bit older, because that's my mom's age, right? So that's why I do what I do is try to try to help fo- uh, people that are her age, um, because it's just sad because there's not a lot of help out there for them when it comes to their health and get, making sure their finances are taken care of 
and making sure that they're going to be okay for the long term. So it's really important to, to, to be uh, aware of these things. Yeah, that's really a good point, Jason. And thank you sh so much for sharing all that. That's really good, valuable information. And so basically, you know, to kind of sum this up a little bit in, in what we've talked about so far is that the, the, the cost associated with not having your health can be extremely damaging. And while we could be prepared in terms of our retirement and have money set aside and even have a large chunk, you mentioned a million dollars, it could be wiped out very, very easily very quickly with, a, you know, with losing your health and having a, you know, a drastic change happen in terms of not being able to care for yourself or, uh, you know, having to stay in the hospital, you know, people have strokes, and then all of a sudden, they're disabled, and then they can't work anymore. And so it's really important that, that we understand that the majority of illness in this country is lifestyle related. And so a lot of the things that we're seeing happening to people right now, these, these really troubling and, and, and difficult situations that people are in are really preventable. They, they, they really are. You know, there are a lot of things that we can do in terms of our health and our inner being and our well-being and our emotional well-being. It's all connected to really help ourselves and prevent these, these, these events from, from basically cutting us out of really enjoying the, the back half of our lives. And instead of traveling and having fun and being with our friends and playing with the grandkids and doing all these things, watching our, our, our children graduate from college and get married and, and being a part of that and having, a, having, having the energy and the enthusiasm to get up every morning and do it, garden, whatever it is that you like to do, golf, I don't know, dancing. I have a lot of people actually that I work with that love to dance. And, you know, when you start to lose your ability to do the things that bring you joy and you start watching your bank account dwindle because of your health, it's, it's really damaging. And so it's really important to have this conversation, I think, and, and for people to understand what the implications are of not really taking care of yourself and that the two, health and wealth, are very much inter interconnected. And when you, ha you, you really have to have your health in order to, to create wealth and preserve and maintain that wealth. Um, yeah. So can, I, can I share something with you about long-term care insurance and what's the problems that are going on with that area right absolutely. now? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I agree. So I actually think health is number one, right? Like, cause if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Right. And then I think wealth is number two. Like you gotta make sure that you're going to be taken care of because you don't want to be a burden right on, on anybody. But if you're healthy at the end of the day, you could probably find some part-time work and you could do some things to help you uh, survive. But if you're not healthy, then you rely all on your wealth and maybe some people are okay, but in general, most people in this country are worried um, that they're going to run out of money, right? So, um, right. you know, we have to take that into consideration. So let me talk about long-term uh, care insurance real quick. So what's going on in that? Yeah. In that way. So back in like the 80s and 90s, you could get a really wonderful long-term care policy that covered a lot of, you know, essentially a lot of care for not a lot of money each month, right? So you'd be able to probably get something that would give you, say, you know, $400 a day or $600 a day of care, and if you bought it when you were like, say, 60, for example, it might have been, say, $400 or, you know, or $600. Well, now there's a lot of bad things happening in this world. Essentially, what had happened is they did not anticipate um, what the costs were going to be, right? They, they inappropriately mm -hmm. anticipate that. And you're seeing this in a lot in the insurance world because, you know, uh, interest rates have been so low. And so they haven't made the returns they, they thought they would make on the premiums that people have paid in. And there's a lot of things going on. And so... What's happening to people's policies, okay, They're, they may be reasonably healthy at, say, 78 or 80, and they've been in retirement now for 15 years, um, and they've been on a fixed income, and they've had a steady, you know, payout on things. And now in these last couple of years, they're seeing their policies jump 30, 40, or 50% in one year Jeez. in monthly cost. So think about that. If your policy goes from, say, you know, 600 to 800 to 900 over like two or three years, and you're on a fixed income, that can be really impactful, right, to, to your finances. And so what's happening is people are actually letting these policies lapse because they can no longer afford them. And they're taking the risk that, you know, at the end of the day, 50% of people never use their long-term care policies, right? They just pass away in their sleep or they don't end up going to a home. So they're taking a 50-50 shot that something like, that is going to happen to them and they get lucky, you know, and just pass away uh, in their sleep. 
but it's going to be a big problem I see coming in the next five to seven years because now the new policies that are coming out, they're very minimal coverage. Um, they're covering very little per day. Um, they're not giving people a lot of options like they had before with what type of facility they go into. And they're not giving anywhere near the, you know, the, um, the daily coverage people need, even just for a basic facility. So it's really scary what's, what, with what's going on in that world. Um, and so planning for that, again, you know, we all want to be healthy to the day we die, right? We want to be healthy all the, all the way to the end. But we have to take into account that if we're 50 or 60 right now, and we know, if you know your health is not where it needs to be, maybe you're, you know, you went to the doctor in the last few months and they're saying you need to lose 30 pounds or you need to lose 20 pounds or else you're going to start seeing some problems. I can tell you for a fact that if you don't take care of it now, it's going to be very, very expensive um, when it comes to the back end. So there's really two things, you know, you need to be working on at the same time. It's like, you know, and here's another thing I found is if you work on your health and wealth at the same time, you know, if you're, if you work on your finances, I usually see people get healthier or if, you, if people are getting healthier, they start looking at other areas of their life that they want to get better, whether that's their family life, their relationships or spirituality or their finances, they kind of really tie in together. Um, and so I really see that the impact that um, if you have more energy, I've seen people getting promotions, right. Or they're starting businesses. So they're doing all these other things because they have the energy to do that. And if you're low, if you're having low energy right now, that's a huge impact on your finances and your long-term and your long-term health. So there's so much that goes into getting this right. But again, starting getting healthy first, I think is super important. And then at the same time, as part of your, your overall health plan, because finances can be very stressful, that leads to mental health. If you get your finances in order and you know, you have a plan and everything's dialed in for your retirement, that can actually reduce your stress levels, which can hopefully lower your blood pressure. And you see if someone <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. It's they're both they're so they're so codependent in a way on each other. Um, And that's, I think that's really why it's so important to to be having this conversation and and really focusing on what can we do. So let's, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about that. So, so Jason, from a financial standpoint, I think everybody uh, at this point knows and understands that one really easy way to, to, to help your finances is to be healthy and to take care of yourself. And so, so Jason, you know, you're the financial guru. So what are some ways on, on that side of things that you can, you can, you know, help protect yourself financially uh, when health crises or health problems start to start, start to arise? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about um, how, like, I'm a big fan of saving people money on taxes and also helping them build, build wealth. So let me talk about like one way to, that they can do that now and then also what to be thinking about as they're turning 60, 65, 70, when it comes to um, planning for, you know, financially, the, the, the health aspects of it. Is that cool? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, something I want you to look into if you're watching this is if you have a high deductible health plan, ADHP, high deductible health plan. And if you do with your insurance, you have the ability to um, put money away in what's called a health savings account. Okay. An HSA. Some people might have a flexible savings account or um, there's another uh, health one, but those aren't quite as good. The health savings account is the best one. And if you have one of those, um, if you're single, you could put up to about $3,300 per year in one of these accounts. Um, And if you have a family, if you're married, it's about 67 and change, maybe 67, 30, 67, 50 right now. So the benefit to that is you put money in now and it's tax deferred, which means you pay, you lower your taxable income for this year. So let's say you put in $6,000 and let's say you're in the new uh, 22% tax bracket, right? Um, Just right off the top, you're going to save about $1,500 in taxes right there, right? Just from, or just from that. Okay. So the benefit to that is if you have health expenses um, or you want to invest in like some sort of health program, if you do qualify, if you are um, technically like medically, you know, obese, or you have diabetes, things like that, you can use this money. And so you put the money in tax deferred, right? So you don't pay taxes today. You can take the money out for any, at any time for anything that is a qualified medical expense, completely tax free. Okay, right. so- and then also, yeah, to add to that, I've actually, I've had clients who um, have used my program who have been clinically overweight or obese have actually written my program off against their taxes as a medical expense as well. So 
you know, getting healthy, there's definitely incentives out there financially speaking to get healthy and to get the help to do it. So, yeah. 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 And, and they changed the rules. So you, you can no longer do over the counter medicines. So any sort of self-diagnosis people are doing is, is not going to be covered anymore. Right. So it has to be real uh, medical conditions. So you put the money in there tax deferred. So that's one tax advantage. Um, you can use the money tax free for any medical expenses, either now or later in retirement. And then you can actually invest that account very similar to an IRA. So people are familiar with IRAs. Most people are Roth IRAs or traditional IRAs. You can invest the money the same way and you can use it the same way as an IRA after you're 59 and a half. So, you know, you can take the money out. Um, again, you can invest it uh, for the long term if you want and keep it in there. So it's another way to defer more income now while maybe your, your tax bracket is higher. Um, for about, you know, over half of people, maybe 70, 80% of people, their tax bracket is going to be lower after they leave work. So it's a great thing to do to get some money in there tax deferred. And if you have medical expenses along the way and you have money, you have extra cash flow, you can still put the money in there, pay the taxes now out of pocket, save your receipts, right? So say you're 50 years old and you have maybe 15 years, 20 years to retirement. If you save all your receipts, it's so important. You have to save your receipts. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Save your receipts. Um, if you save those, <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, and you let that money and you put that money in there and you invest it for, say, the next 20 years. And it might double, you know, or triple in that point, the money you put in there over that time. You can take the money out later and reimburse yourself uh, with 100% zero tax out of, out of the gain, out of the money you put away. And so you can really do some really good things for yourself if you can get your money in there. The biggest challenge for a lot of people is actually like understanding their cash flow well enough to make sure that they are, you know, managing it on a, on a month to month basis, which is something I help out with, right? To make sure that you're planning for these things, but they can put that in there. So there's multiple ways to do it that if you had, um, like you said, say for, you know, your, your program or whatnot, if you can put money in there and then you can immediately take it out if you want and use that. So that saves you a huge chunk on, um, you know, really taxes right there. And so your net cost is going to be a lot lower um, or later on down the road, if they need it for health expenses, essentially it's, you know, money that never gets taxed. So it's called triple tax advantage account. So really, really useful account for health. So an HSA is a triple tax advantage account. Yes. And what people can do is put money in there up to a certain amount every year and have that money on, on the, the, and they can actually invest it so it can grow and they can make Correct. money off of this account. And then, for example, let's just say if someone were to, you know, uh, invest and work with me to get to a healthy weight and start to get their health back and get off prescriptions and, and reverse some chronic conditions and these kinds of things, not only can they take that money out tax free and, and, and use that money to invest in a program like mine, then they can also then turn around and, and deduct that investment against their taxes as a medical expense at the, at the end of the year as well, potentially. Yeah. So the medical expense has to be over like 10%, depending how old they right. are. Right? Uh, you know, if they're, if they're over, I think 65 or 66, it's like 7.5, but it has to be that percentage, 10% of their growth of their, um, you know, AGI, just their gross income. So, mm -hmm. you know, you want to make sure that you're following those guidelines. And then you also want to make sure that, you know, it's a qualified medical expense, right? Because you don't want to use it and then find out later that it, it wasn't. So it's really important just to double check that. But if you, like you said, you had a case that a uh, client was probably working with a doctor and um, it was hundred percent qualified for them to do that. But I, I have to always, you know, as a financial planner, I have to always make sure people are doing things the right way because, you know, the penalties for not doing it right are so important, which is why I get, you know, I get paid to help people to make sure that they are doing things the right way. So right. really, really and always make sure to defer to either someone like Jason or your tax professional when you're looking yes, at doing yes. these kinds of things, guys. So that's really yeah. important too. Um, and then let me add about one more account called a FSA. So it's a flexible savings account. These ones are more, I'd say they're more common because, you know, if, to do the HSA, it's a high deductible health account. So if you are using like a, uh, say one of the uh, ACA plans, then it's, that's probably gonna be like a bronze plan, right? But if you have and for like- for those of you who are unfamiliar with ACA is it's the Affordable Care Act. So if you are on yeah. um, government insurance, like a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners have, uh, they're on the Affordable Care Act. They're, they're within their state. Every state has a program that they give people insurance. So here in California, it's called Covered California. So just for anybody who didn't know what ACA was. All right, Jason, go for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, I just, I don't call it Obamacare anymore because that can be offensive yeah. to some people. But, yeah, we don't you know, want to, yeah. Also ACA. known as, right? Also known <laughs> yeah, as. Yeah, yeah. 
but there's an account called the FSA, so flexible savings account. Those you can put away about $2,500 per year, right? But the problem with those accounts is if you don't use it, you lose it. So it works very similar to an HSA, right? But you can only carry over $500 per year. So you can put it up to $2,500 tax deferred, but you have to use at least $2,000 or else you're going to lose it every year. So if somebody is has one of those accounts available and it's getting towards the end of the year, that's the time to you know, invest in something for your health or even earlier. Right. But, um, you will lose that, you know, if you don't, uh, use it by the end of the year. So that's a, that's a very, again, if you, if you have chronic, uh, health issues, or if you have a plan for something, that's a great way to, to plan on how to pay for something like, you know, any sort of medical expenses, but do not let it roll over because only $500 will roll over. Okay. So then what would you say is that, I mean, it sounds like to me, based on what you're saying that the HSA is a way better approach like why even bother with an FSA so why what's your your take on why even recommending an FSA when the HSA sounds in in my mind based on what we're saying like a much better effect can continue to grow and and mature yeah um so the you know the real difference is what level of health coverage that they have right so (laughs) with a high deductible health plan you're going to have a higher deductible right that you have to cover before the um insurance kicks in So it's really good for people that either have a lot of medical expenses and that they're going to hit that deductible really quickly or no medical expenses that, you know, like for me, I didn't go to the doctor for like eight years, right? At one point I went this year for the first time in eight years because I was like, oh, I should go take care of myself, right? Right. I need need you to yell at me too because I'm the same type, right? Um, And I need to be, (laughs) you know, make sure I'm taking care of myself. But, um, you know, if if you're going to have a lot of expenses or very little, then the HSA is good. So you want to have the high deductible health plan, but some people don't have the high deductible. They have like a medium, right? So instead of like a a bronze level plan, they have a silver plan, for example, where say on a, on a bronze plan, you're going to have to cover 40% of whatever expenses you have up to your maximum, which say for a single person is like $3,000 or so. Right. So Mm -hmm. up to $3,000 of medical expenses, you're gonna have to cover 40%. Right. Right. Um, But the thing is, it's going to be, instead of paying say like $350 a month, that, that plan might be uh, 150 a month. So what I do with my clients is I walk them through and I say, okay, what's your break even point, right? So say I'm dealing with it with an, a single person, if they're saving $200 a month and they haven't been to the doctor and, and they're healthy and they, maybe they get their checkups once a year because those are included at no cost, but they've had no real sickness for five or, or seven years. Well, they, they might be better off saving that 200, paying 150 a month, putting that 200 in, in an FSA, so they save that money tax deferred. And then the first year, about $2,400 would be in their pocket and be, be invested for them, right? So $2,400 out of that 3,500 potential deductible is, is already there. Well, another six months, another five months goes by. So now you're at 3,500 that you put away. Now you covered your full deductible, right? If you, if you had mm-hmm. something that were to happen. So now every month past that, you're now essentially saving money right? Because you have 3,500 put aside, you're going to be paying $200 less to your uh, insurance every single month that that if you don't use it, you essentially lose it. And now you have 200 going into an investment account for you that you can use for either your health or for retirement or whatever it may be, right? So that's for people that are are healthy. Um, But if they, if people aren't, you know, maybe they have just normal stuff, you know, that maybe they have like, you know, some sort of drugs that they're on and they have some sort of, some some other conditions, they might not be on that bronze plan. They might, beyond like the, um, the silver plan. So the silver plan will cover say like 70% um, or 80% sometimes of the expense of the medical and you would cover 20% or 30, right? And you might have right. this, the, your deductible might be only be 1500 or 2500, meaning you know, that you'd have to cover and then hundred percent after that is covered by, by the insurance, right? So, you know, that's and deductibles better and out of pockets keep going up year over year over year. I mean, I've yeah, seen it, yeah. I mean, I've been watching average deductibles and our average out of pockets, I should say, go from 3000 to 5000 to 7000. I mean, it's pretty normal now for an average out of pocket to be about $7,000. Yeah. Every year. I, I, you know, and we deal with Medicare, right? So let's talk to the people that are like 65. Um, you know, 6,700 is pretty normal, right? You'll see 6,700 a lot. Um, you can see 30, 3,500, 3,700 and you can see lower, but then your monthly cost is going to go extremely Huge. higher. Right. Yeah. So that's, you know, and 
that's not low. You know, $6,700 a year, you have to cover if something were to happen, especially chronic conditions, right? If you're like extremely sick to where like, hey, you got a, a, a clock ticking, okay. But if you just have chronic conditions because, you know, maybe you have heart issues or you have weight issues, or you have things like that, that you're just at the doctor, you know, once every couple months, that can last for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And that could be a huge cost over the long term. Not only that, but then you're missing work, right? Potentially. So you're losing income, potentially losing your job. There's so many other things that can go into it when your health is not taken care of. That's why I say health is number one, um, but wealth is closely aligned. But it, again, if you don't have your health, it's really tough to have wealth. Right. And I mean, just, I mean, I'm, the average di diabetic alone, not to even talk about the other chronic conditions, but the average diabetic over 55 it, it spends on average $5,000 out of pocket every year on medical expenses. And like you said, to your point, I mean, that doesn't include missed productivity, time off work, uh, potentially losing a job because of, of, of not, you know, being present and being able to really do the job at the best of your ability. So it is super important. And so thank you for, for also clarifying that FSA and HSA thing. I'm glad you, you know, got that. Yeah. But you know, who, who doesn't want to feel good, right? Who wants to be just not feeling good all the time, right. you know, have no energy. And honestly, most, a lot of people that have low energy, they may not even realize it right? It's just because right. they feel normal. But I have seen people, um, I have a client right now, right? Let me tell you about him. So um, really awesome guy, but he went into retirement without a plan. Okay. So something that um, I don't want to call a requirement, but I, I heavily emphasize this for clients is to create a retirement calendar, right? Nobody, not many people talk about this because when you go from working 40 to 50 hours a week to doing nothing, your body deteriorates so fast that most people pass away within five years that don't actually take action and create a health plan, right? So when I have their calendar, we create a retirement calendar. Um, we actually put things on the calendar that they're going to do as to stay healthy, right? So silver right. sneakers is a big thing, right? That, that's a oh, big yeah, I thing love for silver sneakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can get that covered. Um, but I have a client who, um, based on our conversation, is now going to be training for a 5k, right? And he's taking it easy. He's just walking, you walk in a couple blocks, awesome. but he's kind of doing it on his own, right? So he doesn't really have anybody to guide him or to teach him or to show him, you know, how to eat right and how to plan out your workouts, how to escalate the intensity to a point where you're still staying safe. So he's kind of doing it on his own. But what he noticed is like, he was having some, um, some mental issues where his brain, that's the person I was talking about, where this guy ran businesses for 30 years and he was like CEO, top guy. He was like the guy to come to when it came to, um, you know, consulting for taxes and also for the, he really worked with dentists, right? For dental practices. Mm -hmm. So he would charge a lot of money, but now his mental capacity is diminished. And so we have to keep our meetings really short because at some point his brain just kind of shuts down. Right. Wow. But what he noticed, and this has only been, uh, we we're working the other couple months now, but he's been doing extra walks and now he's up to about two miles. And I think a 5k is what is, is either 2.3 or 3.2. You could, it's 3.2. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. There or we go. 3.1 or 3.2. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but he's up to now walking two miles. So not only is he doing better with his physical health, now his mental health, he's noticing so many other benefits when it comes to his ability to focus and to concentrate, to work on his hobbies to do the things he wants to do, um, where his brain just doesn't shut down. He's doubling the time now that he can focus and really do things that are bringing joy to his life. And the amount of frustration and the amount of disappointment in himself that is decreased, right? He was really just disappointed in himself. Like it was just, I mean, it's kind of, it's sad to see, but this, this is reality when you get to these ages and you don't take care of yourself, you know? Um, There's a lot and, of that beating yourself up, guilt and shame right. around, man, I spent 50 years <clears throat> taking care of everybody else. And now look at me and I, I see that a lot too in, in my practice and, and working with people and, and a lot of, a lot of it is so emotional and so mental and, 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 and a lot of it just is, is just taking that first step and building that momentum so that you can start to have that confidence and start to build that, that self, your self-esteem back up again and realize and recognize it's like, I, I use the airplane analogy. Every time you get on the plane, what do they tell you? If the plane is going, you know, if things are going south, put your oxygen mask on first yeah. before you can help anybody else. Because let's face it, if you're passed out, you can't help anybody else on the plane and you're going to cause more problems because then people need to deal with you being passed out. So it's the same thing with your health and your family and your life. I mean, if you don't, 
take care of yourself. You're not going to be at your best to take care of your business, to take care of your family, to be present with your friends. And so it really is important to, to really take the time and understand how important it is. And it is not selfish to take care of yourself first. If anything, it's sure. selfless. Because yeah. if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to end up being a burden on your family uh, eventually. Maybe not today, but yeah. eventually. And so it's really yeah. important to, to know that and understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this thing, let's look at this too. It's like, say you have drug costs, right? Because who wants to be on pills all day anyway? So that, that's depressing, right? right? But say your drug costs are, you know, let's say $400 a month, okay? So $400 a month um, in just drug costs is what about five thousand dollars a year is forty eight hundred dollars per year okay so what if you have drug costs that are five thousand dollars a year and you have other medical costs which could be another five thousand dollars a year and you're trying to cover your long-term care insurance right that you're that you're that you have in there as well and maybe that's another five thousand dollars a year let's say it's just fifteen thousand dollars to cover health care health costs you know when you go all in like that insurance plus you know drug costs plus um long-term care insurance so that's replacing, say, $15,000, right, of after tax income, okay? So safely in retirement, especially with interest rates being so low, 3 to 4% is a, a withdrawal rate that you can take off your assets, okay? That is pretty safe that will last, say, 30 years, for example. You know, that's, that's just a baseline calculation. It's kind of like, like a back of the napkin is what we call it, right? Um, but everyone's mm -hmm. different depending on their risk tolerance and things like that. If you have higher risk tolerance or lower, it could be higher or lower, but let's say 4%. Okay. So to replace $40,000 a year would be a million dollars in assets. Okay. To replace $20,000 a year would be 500 then, right? So half of, uh, 40,000, 20,000, so half of a million is, is 500,000. So to replace say 15,000, we need three quarters of that, which would be about 375. Okay. So that tells me right there to, if you have poor health going into, you know, into retirement and you have to have $15,000 a year of health costs, you need to have an extra $375,000 put aside that you can't touch for things like giving gifts away, you know, for taking vacations, for buying, you know, new cars or whatever it may be in retirement, because you need that money to make sure you can cover your health care costs. And how many years is that over? I mean, how many years does that three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars last you for your your health costs every year? Yeah, at four percent, it'll probably last about thirty years. You know, again, this is back okay. in the napkin type stuff. Got um, it. But, you know, we've had to be a lot more conservative as as financial advisors recently because interest rates are so low, right? They're so low, and they are going up now. Okay, they are going up a little bit, but they're not going to be eight or nine percent like they were, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and they're not going to go to 19% like they were at some point, you know, back in like the early 80s, late 70s. Um, so we have to be very conservative. So 3%, if say you had to do 3%, well, now you're looking at what, four or $500,000 to cover that same expense. You just have to have less money you can't use for other things. You have to have that there to generate the income just to cover your healthcare costs. So what right. is it really costing you now not only to have to save more, which means you reduce your income now, right? Which means you have less to live off of, less, less to enjoy life off of now, all the way until you retire, right? So from now until retirement, you have to have more money put aside. So you have to, you have to uh, put a bigger percentage aside. And then through retirement, that's money you can't use for yourself for enjoyment without risk of running out and potentially being in a crisis situation and being, um, you know, outliving your money, which I think is going to happen more and more. Um, we're seeing a lot of people that are living to 100 or 105. Um, over the next 15 years, medical advances are, are there's some really interesting things coming, uh, very things that you think are like futuristic sci-fi type things, but they're, they're real and they're coming. Living to 120 or 130 is going to be very reasonable for people that are 50 years old right now. That's going to be very, yeah. very reasonable. So we have to plan that far out. So I say you want to retire at 65 and say we put those assets on a 30 year time frame, right? At the 4%. That's planning till 95. That's pretty normal for right now. Well, pretty soon, we're going to have to start planning for 105, 115, 125. And so again, now you're taking 2% of assets. So now how, how much do you need to cover? That's 15,000 today. What's that 15,000 going to be in 30 years? That might be 45 or 50,000. So now we're take, saying a million dollars set aside just to cover healthcare, all because 
you didn't take care of yourself earlier on when you had a chance to, to get it right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Scary. Yeah, that was, that was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I think it's really, I think it's really valuable to know and understand this stuff uh, for, for anybody that's really taking a look at their finances, taking a look at their health and trying to come up with a game plan for what can you do right now today, starting, you know, right now to, to understand what is going on in the world around you and in yourself and how you can protect yourself to the best of your ability. And I think that these conversations are, are just, you know, maybe they're more pragmatic and they're not sexy. I you know it's not, uh, it's not a sexy conversation to talk about all the implications of your, your finances when it comes to your health, but it's important and it's necessary. And we all have to, we have to face these realities in our lives and we have to plan accordingly. And the, the best way to protect yourself, financially speaking, is to protect your health. And so I think it's really, really um, valuable to, to have had this conversation with you. And um, so, so Jason, to kind of, you know, wrap things up a little bit with you, I'd love to, you know, get what's your, what's your, you know, if you have anything that you think is like the one thing, if you could tell somebody that's 55 right now, that's going to retire in 10 years, What's the one thing, you know, that you can do starting right now to give yourself a little bit more peace of mind heading into those years to protect yourself uh, and your finances? The one thing I would say is invest in yourself. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's not an expense when you're spending money on your health because it may feel like it because it's coming out of your pocket today, but you're investing in yourself so that later on, your overall expenses are much lower because you did so many correct things when you still had time. If you wait till you're out of time and it's 75 and you're trying to fix it, it's, you know, it's, it, I don't want to say it's too late because it's not right, but it could be if you now have other issues. So don't look at spending on your health today as an expense, look at it as an investment in yourself. And if you spend, you know, say a few thousand dollars today, you might get you know, 10, 15, or 20 times the return on that in lower costs and health expenses because you develop the right habits today and you get yourself where you need to be so that you're still out there jogging um, at 75, 85 years old, which is very, I've seen that you know, more and more. Right. So yeah. that's what I would say is my number one thing. Awesome, Jason. Yeah, th that's beautiful. And I, you know, thank you so, so much for joining me this morning. I know you're really busy. Uh -huh. You've got a lot of, you know, a, a lot of amazing people to help and you're doing such amazing work. And I'm so excited to, to have you in my, in my, my network, in my life. And I, I really, I enjoy all of our conversations together so much. And so, Hey guys, look, if, if, you know, if you've watched this and you're listening to this and you're starting to think, Hey, maybe I do need to start to look at what, what do I need to do to really get my health under control so I can protect my, my finances and I can enjoy the the, my 50s and my 60s and my 70s and 80s and, and gosh only knows you know beyond that so you know if, if you're if you're having if you just got diagnosed with something or you just got put on medication for blood pressure or cholesterol or you know you're overweight and your doctor's like hey you got to lose the weight but you tried things and nothing seems to stick and you've gotten books and you've gone to, from doctor to doctor and been just getting the runaround and not really finding a, a strategy that to really do this and get this solved once and for all I'd be happy to talk with you I'd be happy to connect with you I love talking to anybody who wants to talk about their health. I'm, 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 that's my passion. So um, I'm going to put in the chat on Facebook here, the link to my, to my uh, scheduling page. And so, you know, just go ahead and, and click on the link. It's genhealthcoach.com forward slash connect and just book a call and we'll hop on the phone and we'll talk about your health. We'll spend 45 minutes and we're going to take a deep dive look. I'm going to actually listen to you and listen to what you got going on and we're going to talk about what's working and what's not working in your health and where you want to go and, and how we can start making a, a, a solid plan to get you there so you can really enjoy uh, your, your life. And, and as a good friend of mine says, you know, add life to your years and years to your life. So, um, Jason, again, thank you so much. Uh, I really hope that everybody that's tuned in and is going to tune in in the future got a lot out of this, this conversation. And I know I did. So I know a lot more about the financial system and how my health is, is affected as well. So I got a lot out of it too. So thank you, Jason. My pleasure. You guys have a good one. All right. Take care, everybody.